welcome back to my channel. I've got a very interesting one today because much as I like to offer advice about skincare, sometimes certain problems are so stubborn they really do need a hands-on expert. Now, I met a woman called Megan uh, about six months ago and I'll be really honest and transparent here, she works for my management company and she was assigned to me, poor woman, so she deserved a reward and she admitted to me that she'd suffered long term with her skin. She'd had stubborn, I would call it low level cystic acne. Sorry, Megan, if you're, you're listening to this and you're watching this. And she just was at her wits end. And I had recently been to interview a woman called Pam, who is a facialist. Somebody's getting their Ricardo delivery. I'm so sorry. Pam, who is a facialist um, at a, a, a really beautiful little, uh, spa salon in Fulham in South London not far from where I live called Mortar and Milk and when I met her she said to me acne is my bitch which I instantly loved obviously and she says that long-term stubborn acne is not something that you can easily clear with a little bit of overnight salicylic or a little bit of tret what you need is a long-term plan that she believes works from the inside out. So I, I just found her fascinating and she has helped in the last three or four months clear Megan's skin up and there are before and after pictures coming up, probably by about 80%, 85% without any drugs, without any prescription products at all. And so what I wanted to do was sit down with Pam and she was very shy and interview her and ask her what her top tips were. And these are not basically product tips, these are lifestyle tips on how to look after problem breakout skin. Um, she's going to mention products that she loves, it's all from one range. I will at the bottom put on links of products I like, I do quite like the range she uses, it's Exuviance, it's the sister range to Neostrata, which I love. Um, she uses Exuviance because it's more of a sort of facialist range, it's scented, um, it's just more of a pleasant experience to have a treatment like that. Um, but it's, you won't be surprised to hear that it is uh, oil free, rinse off, polyhydroxy acid based. And then what she does is she calls people back to have regular facials where she peels the skin, where she deep cleanses the skin, where she does minor extractions, all that sort of stuff. Zero lasers zero prescriptions, zero hardcore stripping prescription products. She also believes in lifestyle changes. And before I say any more, let's introduce Pam. You'll hear my voice in the background asking the questions. We didn't have a two set up that day, so I've got the camera just on her. I ask her for her top tips. And while I'm there, I'm going to drop in the pictures of Megan, the before and after, and also her having her treatment. Thank you, Megan, for taking your makeup off in front of all my followers, because I know that you, uh, you felt vulnerable doing it, but I also know that you wouldn't have done it six months ago, and you are now happy to do it. I've never seen your skin looking better, and I think this time next year, it's going to be completely clear. So thank you to Pam at Mortar and Milk. What I want you to take away from this, no matter where you are in the world, whether you can afford exuviance or not, is listen to her advice. Because sometimes the most obvious things are causing your constant breakouts that you wouldn't believe. She's really very clever. I'm gonna put all the details, if you happen to live in London, of where you can find her below, and the products she mentions as well. But this is more of a listen to this really smart woman who battles acne in her clients every single day just offering you some really grown-up, clever skincare advice. So if somebody comes to you and they've got chronically bad breakouts, what advice do you give them? And can you manage to make it five top tips? Yeah, I think so. Um, I Well, the first thing we do is we talk about gut health. Uh, so that, that's first and foremost, we get the gut sorted. Um, and that's usually probiotics, not necessarily long-term, but for a few months, and it's usually a high dose. That's, that's absolutely hands down what we have to do. Do you give diet advice as well? I'm not a nutritionist. So my motto is if it's made with love, eat it. If it's not, don't. What I also loved when I came to see you and we chatted was your lifestyle advice beyond healthy gut. Talk me through this. So uh, I love people, but people are dirty. Um, they so, are, aren't they? Yeah, really dirty. 
So I think one of the things that people don't think about is their sheets. So sheets are critical. I cannot tell you how many times people have come in and said to me that they only wash their sheets every three or four weeks. I had a client who told me three or four months and, and that client had really bad acne. So we, we wallow in, in sweat and filth every night in our sheets. And I think people think that when they wash their face and they do their nighttime routine, that that's good, they can go to bed and it's all fine. But actually all that gunk from the day is sitting in their hair, it's on their body, and unless they're literally washing themselves from head to toe every night, we get a buildup. So you get a buildup of sweat, a buildup of dust mites, a buildup of bacteria. This is the gross one, a buildup of other people's dead skin cells. And it's, we're just rolling in it for you however many hours you're asleep. It's, it's kind of gross. And we worry about the flannel, and the flannel's really important to keep clean. But I am far more concerned about sheets and pillows. So people who sleep with dirty pillows, old pillows, <laughs> that if, if you look at a pillow and your cover has gone yellow, if it's going through one way on the pillowcase, it's absolutely coming back out the other way. I remember you first telling me this and it was like a light bulb went yeah. on over my head. Nobody had ever said this to me before and you're absolutely right. Yeah. If you're healthy, you're between seven and eight hours and you're lying in gunk. gunk. Yeah, yeah. Some people don't change their pillows for years. How often should you change your pillow and what filling do you like in a pillow, ideally? So I... So I, I, I had this conversation with someone recently um, about what the filling should be. Down is obviously far more breathable, but there's, there's okay. a downside to having a down pillow and that is animal torture. I w I'm, I'm gonna do a slight plug here for nothing that I'm involved in, but John Lewis actually has pillows made with down that are sort of aftermath. Exactly. Ethically sourced, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah a byproduct of the meat yeah. industry, yeah. Synthetic yeah. doesn't breathe. So while they're cheaper, it doesn't breathe. So um, you're more likely to sweat and more likely to have it capture up by your face. So, and you're more likely to build up bacteria. So. Anything else we can think of that somebody should be doing before we get on to what I suspect everybody thinks we should be thinking of primarily, and that's skincare. Yeah, so um, phones. Phones are filthy little beasts. Um, and we're all addicted to them. Yeah, and the thing is, is people will always say to me, but I don't really talk on my phone very much. I don't, that's not it. It's the fact that we're on our phone. So I use the example of if you are going to work, let's say you're getting on the tube and you've, you've left the house and your hands are clean or whatever, and you pick up your phone and you're sending emails or texting or whatever, and then you get off the tube and you've touched everything out in public, you go into work, put your phone down, you think, because this is what I would do, you think, I'm gonna go clean my hands because it's disgusting. Or if you're just going to a restaurant to eat food or whatever, the second you pick your phone back up, you have completely disinfected your hands again. And if you're a face toucher, that's a problem. Because a lot of people sit like this to their desk, but they touch like that. If you're, if you're an acneic person, you're putting bacteria back up on the face. and. Um, there's a recent study done that said our phones are 10 times more filthy than a public toilet seat. And I always say to my clients, you wouldn't like touch a toilet seat and then touch your face. So I will have people disinfect their phone on a daily basis. With what? So I'm pretty easy, anti-back white. I, I struggle with it because then that's environmentally not great. But again, we're, we're doing this during a moment when they're having flare-ups. Once skin gets fixed or healed, you know, you don't have to do it as often, but while, while it's sort of struggling, um, I, I'm not... Anyone will do, you don't mind? Do okay. An anti-back wipe. And just really quickly, I often, dem I think my phone probably gets cleaned three or four times a day, because if I have a new client, I'm constantly demonstrating. It doesn't have to be this arduous, just do it quick, just, but get all sides. <laughs> Anything you can think of before we go on to skincare? Oh, yes, I know. So there's this thing that people do when they clean their face. I have this, I come from a different country. We have two very similar, but very different languages. And I, a lot of people come in and say, well, I don't, first I wash my face and then I cleanse it. And I don't really know what that means to be completely and utterly honest. And I'm always like, I don't, you don't have to re-explain that to me. The splashing. So you, you put your cleanser on and then you splash. It does not, it does not get the gunk off. So I get a lot of people in with, Breakouts and congestion right under there, and they're, they're splashers. 
So they, they clean, they do their thing, and then they just splash water on and it all drips down and they think they've cleaned everything, but actually it's just hanging out right here mm -hmm. and it can just, and they'll always say to me, oh, I'm getting hormonal breakouts down here. It's not hormonal breakouts. I mean, that does exist, but for the most part, it's almost always um, just products sitting down there and along those lines. So using a flannel and making sure that people actually wipe all the way down and rinse completely. The other bit is teaching people how to wash their hair. So when you get hairline breakouts or um, even sometimes eczema, because it's you can get a buildup of products which can be super irritating. I spend a lot of time teaching people how to wash their hair. So I'm just gonna go for it. Um, but make, I always do a double cleanse on my hair, but I don't wash my hair every day. So um, you, making sure you get the lather down into the scalp, I'm literally just doing this all over, everywhere. And then doing the same thing when you rinse, separating out, I do that twice. But when I do the back, I, I literally separate my hair and it seems like such a silly thing to do when you're rinsing. But if you don't, product sits there. And that is 100% every time somebody comes to me with hairline breakouts down here, it's always because they're not shampooing properly. One of my pieces of advice, which I actually learned off a Kardashian, which is deeply shocking to me, is if you suffer from, if you generally don't suffer from breakouts, but you suffer from particular areas on your back, or for me it was my bottom, rinse your conditioner off the side of your head. Don't rinse your conditioner down your back. That's actually brilliant. Because conditioners are formulated to cling to dead protein, yeah. therefore they cling down your back. And for me, they used to cling down into the sway of my back to the top of my bottom. And the minute I started rinsing my conditioner off the side, which is contra indicated to how yeah, you would normally do it, normal. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. stopped getting breakouts. That's, I am gonna say I that. stole that. Actually, it's not from a Kardashian, it was from a Kardashian's dermatologist, so there you go. So I'm, I'm I feel better about it. down, now everyone's gonna hear that. I love that I've taught you, yeah, the skin yeah, yeah. guru or something. Right, let's talk skincare. Okay. What are your key actives for a skin prone to breakouts? So naturally someone might think AHAs, mm -hmm. and I'm not really that way. We do need it. So my big acne AHA is mandelic acid. I think mandelic is brilliant. It's lipophilic, so it doesn't dry out the skin. It goes into that pore and it dislodges all the gunk but it also exfoliates off and it's, it's um, antibacterial. So it's brilliant for acne. I think it's one of the new generation ones that yeah. not many people have heard of, because yeah. traditionally you think salicylic, don't yeah, you? But exactly. Mandelic is supposed to yeah, be... So, yeah, and Mandelic's sort of the new kid on the block. Yeah, and, it is. And salicylic is sort of tried and true, but, but this is kind of the new thing. And we've, I, what I find is when I switch people from, and there's nothing against salicylic, but when I switch people from salicylic to Mandelic, there's less drying, there's less peeling of the skin. Um, and then, I, I, and I've told you this many times, I am the biggest lover of polyhydroxy acids. Yeah. I, polyhydroxy acids can go on anyone and they make everyone's skin better. There are so many great, um, uh, I never know if to, to call it creations, um, formulations, like discoveries, whatever out there. There's, but polyhydroxy acids to me, are the best and they're completely lab made aren't they yeah yeah and they're literally anyone can use them and everyone will have better skin for it i remember you saying to me because uh when i came to see you i was suffering from a flare-up of my perioral dermatitis yeah. and i said oh i'm not putting acids on it and you went no polyhydroxy and it's true and the minute i put my yeah. i think i put my neostrata polyhydroxy acid on yeah. ironically it cleared up yeah because you automatically think don't put acids on sensitized skin, but it actually re helped rebuild the barrier function. Yeah, it, they are large water loving acid molecules. They heal and hydrate the skin. They do everything an AHA does, albeit slower. Mm -hmm. um, they're second generation AHA, but they are, um, they do so much, like they do so many other things. They literally, pull water to the skin. So your key <clears throat> four or five steps of exuviance would be? For, for acneic skin. Yes. Yeah. Okay, gentle cleansing cream, polyhydroxy acid cleanser. It smells like a beautiful <laughs> um, That suits everyone. Uh, it, it keeps the skin really soft. So w when you're talking about skin, one of the things when you have 
an inflammatory skin. So it doesn't matter, you know, if you're suffering from acne or rosacea or eczema, it's inflammatory. What you're trying to do is get your pyrosebaceous unit to function better. It's your engine room. So in order to do that, it has to be hydrated because um, if it's not, the sebaceous gland, so this is your pyrosebaceous unit, the sebaceous gland that's connected to it will start producing tons of oil. And In an attempt to hydrate your skin, yeah. Yeah, but oil doesn't hydrate. No. Its molecular weight's way too big. So I equate it to, um, uh, it's like if you've gone for a run and um, you forgot a water bottle and you go to a pub and say, hey, I need water because I've just gone for a run and I'm really thirsty. And they say, they wouldn't, but let's just pretend. They say, um, well, we're out of water, but you want beer. Beer will satiate that thirst, that hunger for that, that immediate quenching. Um, water will actually satiate that and hydrate the body, but beer won't hydrate the body, it'll dehydrate the body. So when you are producing, when the sebaceous gland is going mad and producing lots of oil, it goes into the pylosebaceous unit. That pylosebaceous unit does not like it. It's defense mechanism because its job is to regulate sebum production. Its defense mechanism is literally to swell to a close, to stop. Like, it just, yeah, I'm not going to let you put oil in me, but it's continuing to put oil in you. And what it's doing is it's trapping the oil, the dead skin cells and the bacteria are in there and they're trying to get out so they create that inflammatory response oil can still get out it goes to the top of the surface of the skin um, it will penetrate that stratum corneum and that stratum lucidum it doesn't actually penetrate it just fills in the gaps between the cells but it cannot get past that stratum lucidum so it becomes this recursive cycle so if we are using products that actually dehydrate our skin we're actually making acne worse because we're sending that pylosebaceous unit into or that the sebaceous gland into overproduction it just becomes this vicious cycle so are you anti-oils full stop um yes so yes i i struggle to say that because of course we have so I yeah. always say that. I always say I'm completely anti-oils unless you have clinically dry skin. And then, then I understand why you want a comfort blanket, but I still think in the long term they're not good for your skin. No, no. So I always say to people, if you really want to use an oil, you can use it as a blanket. Yeah. So you get your low molecular weight products underneath and you can put it over the top. And there are some beautiful oils out there that feel nice and smell nice and, and are ethically sourced and wonderful, but can an oil change the skin in any way, shape or form? No. What do you say to somebody who thinks that you can use oil to treat acne? I... Somebody once told me that oil suffocates acne. Well, I'd probably giggle a little bit. Um, I, so Nick always tells me I have no poker face. So I would say no. I say that acne vulgaris is um, anaerobic, so you can't suffocate it because yeah. it doesn't need oxygen to live. Yeah, and it, it, I'd probably like be dying inside and get the giggles, but I'm, I have no ability to say, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I would say, no, does the urine yeah. crack. So we've got a great skin softening skin cleanser that yeah. Deep cleanses the skin, gets rid of the excess sebum, yeah. doesn't dehydrate the skin with polyhydroxy acids yeah. in it. it. It's brilliant for acne. What's your next yeah. step? So um, my next step, so for day-to-day -day routine, I would say the Skin Rise Bionic Tonic Pads. We just... You're obsessed with these, aren't I you? Obsessed. And you gave me a great tip, which is they're so drenched that you can technically cut them in half. Yeah. So I tell all my clients to cut them in half. It is a fact. It is... A nightmare to have to do it but once you start on them you won't want to stop the thing about the pads is it is a combination of polyhydroxy acids and it is I just I think it's the single greatest product ever made and you wipe them over your skin you and leave the system. acid in place yeah it's yeah. a wipe on serum and will half a pad do neck and chest as well yeah so i i mean i have clients who cut them in quarters because they find i don't think i'd cut mine in quarters but yes it will because it just you just need a thin layer of it they again we'll go back to that pylosebaceous unit and trying to make that function better and they just make it function better the skin heals when it's hydrated if it's not hydrated it cannot heal so it works twofold it hydrates the skin so that sebaceous gland won't start going mad 
but it helps in healing the skin. So when you create a wound by by picking a spot, you have to go through this healing mechanism. And if it's really dried out, it can't heal. How do you then start super hydrating the skin after that? So it depends on how bad the acne is. So if it's mild acne, it will depend on anything. So if they have underlying inflammatory issues, so like vascular issues, I might in the morning have them put on a little bit of ultra restorative cream, which is just like a really calm, calm polyhydroxy acid moisturizer. But if there's some pretty active acne, um, Exuvians has something called Night Renewal Hydrogel, which is a combination of polyhydroxy acids and mandelic acid. And it is our buster for acne. Um, so that will usually be twice a day, even though it's called Night Renewal, it, uh, we use it twice a day. And then a, um, uh, an SPF over the top. What sort of SPF do you like? Because so many people have spoken to me over the summer about the fact that SPFs have broken them out. Yeah, so um, Exuviance makes one called Sheer Refining Fluid that is specifically targeted to um, acneic skin. So it's brilliant. We have no. What's no the sun filter? Is it a. Is it's a, a 35 um, and, it's, and a, it's a broad spectrum. What we're going to do now is we're going to go and show what one of your typical facials is because. When you come and see Pam, prepare to have some really scary pictures taken. I'll happily share mine. Pam's got them on file. <laughs> uh, your pictures are taken in a professional 3D camera, aren't they? That show sun damage, yeah. hydra dehydration. It's, just, it's all the shun. Sebum in, production, yeah, inflammation, inflammation. Dehydration, pigmentation, and then tone and texture, okay. which is not a shun, but yeah. Um, and then we're going to introduce you to somebody who, Megan, who, who has been on this journey, and we're going to show you her before and after pictures because she has kindly volunteered to be really honest and open about her skincare journey. So here we are starting uh, Megan's facial. Yeah. Uh, tell me what your steps are in your facial and what we should be looking for in a good facial. So uh, active ingredients is the most important thing. I'm, I'm not that person who's going to give you that um, super glorious, relaxing um, treatment. Um, a good deep cleanse, prepping of the skin, a good, really good solid acid, and then antioxidants. That's the best thing. I do not massage acneic skin. I would never massage acneic skin. It's not a nappy facial. <laughs> um, not a what facial? Nah. Okay, I just realized that's an American versus different uh, meaning. She's not going to nap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Right. Yeah. Um, and I tend not, I mean, facial is such a word that we all use, but I kind of, I sort of call it a treatment. <laughs> so I'm not going to do tons. I'll get a load of views. I love them. Well. Yeah, I always do extractions, always. I'm pretty gentle about it, but I'm not going to ever let anything sit in the skin unless it doesn't want to come out. So if it doesn't come in the first go, I leave it. And that, you know what? I never chastise people for picking. I just try to teach them the best way to do it. Um, I think people will always pick their will. spots. So what's the best way to pick your spots then? So I, I never do this couple reasons one there's bacteria under our fingernails two we the nails will tear up um, and three if we if we go right up close you can get some to come out the top but actually you can cause an eruption down below and and kind of sort of trailer breakout so I use the sides of my fingers and I always use tissue um, and I wrap it doesn't really matter how you wrap it as long as you wrap it I go outside, so I've just extracted this one, but I will go way outside of it, push down and come up from the bottom mm -hmm. and I give it two shots. If it doesn't come out in two shots, I leave it because otherwise I'm going to cause scarring. I will always use Clincept um, afterwards. Kills bacteria on contact. Love it. Just prepping for acids. Um, this is a home treatment as well. It's one of those ones, I can use it on people with even severe rosacea. It has this weird um, way of making people think it feels very hot, when in fact it's very cold. So it reduces redness in the skin by a lot. But I use it as a prep, because um, we've kind of got off the residual dead skin cells. Now I just want to get out the excess oil and gunk out of her skin so the acids can kind of do their So I'm starting with Mandelic, um, just getting it on. This is for the acne. Mandelic's brilliant for acne. 20 what percentage is 20%, 20, but it's a 3.2 pH, so skin sits at a 5.5. It's not a dramatic drop, but it's a decent drop. How does it feel, Megan? Just fine. 
No. Tingly? No? No. Okay. So um, Megan uses Mandelic every day, so she's likely to not feel all the feels as, as, as someone might do if they've not, like if they come in for the first time, um, she's likely to be very used to it. And her skin's taking it really, really well. I don't have any, um, any added vascular issues. And this is glycolic straight on top. And good. the glycolic will go through the mandelic, will it? Yeah, yeah, it actually drives the mandelic down deeper. So mandelic on its own kind of just hits the dermal epidermal junction. Um, and glycolic will drive it. it. works like a lovely truck driver. And glycolic is hydrophilic and mandelic is lipophilic. So they work beautifully at hydrating the skin. They work like little sponges because the skin needs both lipid and water hydration. And does that start to tingle, Megan? A uh, little bit, yeah. Okay. Are you just being super brave? No, I, I, I'm kind of hard as nail. Five, six minutes. So if I were to see a reaction that I don't like, like epidermolysis, so frosting of the skin, I, I would, off, I would take it off much sooner. What did you call that? Epidermolysis. Epidermolysis, yeah. Okay. So that's kind of that frosting yeah. or lifting. Um, but I don't have any of that, so she's kind of going, by the time I'm totally ready, and time starts essentially from the first brush stroke of the first acid. So she's got a little bit of redness right there because that's where she gets waxed, but everywhere else has taken it brilliantly. So I like to protect the eyes multiple ways um, because I'm going to spray a neutralizer. So if you think about, like back in science class, when you work with acids, that pH scale, we've got to bring it back to her natural pH, which is 5.5. So, so this you're is using an alkaline. An really? alkaline yeah. solution, yeah. So I'm just gonna, I always start on the forehead. And you can, I don't know if you can bring the camera over here, you can see where I didn't do the glycolic. Watch the line. It It's not white where I did the mandelic. It's kind of cool actually. So I know it's been neutralized when it stops turning white. Very messy. I <laughs> know, oh, sorry. Polyhydroxy acid, low molecular weight oxygen. Um, it goes on, it's blue. You can't really see it's blue. You can see my hand. Um, and then it converts to bubbles. And then we just let it do its job. The faster it goes in, so where it will go in first, actually, I should say it that way, is where the skin has the most oxidative stress. So I will watch it and see how it penetrates. And then where it goes in first, I will look at that area and say, okay, what is it that's going on in the skin? And I can already tell it's the top of her nose. And the reason it's going in the top of her nose first is because that's where she has pigmentation. So we finish with? Um, so I'm gonna put, I put some Bionic Tonic, um, professional size of uh, the Skin Rise Bionic Tonic, which is that, the pat when it comes in pads and retail form. And then I'm just putting a deep hydration mask on her just because um, she, I know she's going to bed after this. So it's a really good leave on treatment. The, um, this even scarring is much better. Mm. Like and that uh, underlying- What period of time is this? So 24th so of March, March, six months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just it's and Megan doesn't come in and see you that often. It's so no, it's not no. necessarily just the no, facials. It's no, the routine, it's, isn't it? Do you know what I always say? The facial is literally the least important thing. Out of if if you had to choose between, it's not not important, but that day to day care of your skin, and taking care of your gut, and making sure you have the clean sheets and the clean phone, and oh makeup brushes, clean makeup brushes. That's far more important than mm -hmm. having a treatment. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. I hope you found that interesting. But more importantly, even if you don't live in London, if you can't go and visit Pam and you can't have her facials, whether you're tempted to try the products or simply follow her advice, some of the things she said to me were like a light bulb going on over my head. I'm like, oh, pillows, uh, probiotics. It kind of made sense. Clean your phone. She's clever, right? And it's because she is hands-on literally tackling acne and congested skin every single day. Also, how scary are those pictures in those different lights? I really should ask her to send my pictures because to be perfectly frank, if I'm asking Megan to do this, why shouldn't I do it? Uh, mine obviously aren't spots, it's just the sun damage and the wrinkles and the sagging. Anyway, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. I hope you found this interesting because it's a very different video, but she is one of my most trusted skincare experts. And I'll see you soon.